AutoZone is your one stop for better stopping power, helping you save time, money, and a lot of sanity by doing the job yourself. Now, to do the job right, you'll need the following tools, which can all be found at AutoZone, including a caliper compression tool and a torque wrench, which are both available through AutoZone's Lona Tool program. Before you begin, you'll want to refer to the precautions section in your car's owner's manual for any special callouts or warnings. It's also a good idea to have a repair manual on hand to refer to during this job and any future jobs you decide to tackle. AutoZone recommends wearing safety glasses and gloves during your repair. And while not all new brake pads come with hardware, you can always pick some up at AutoZone. At any time, feel free to use the description section to jump ahead in the video. And while you're not changing your rotors today, now is a great time to check them for any irregular wear patterns or signs that they need to be replaced. Before you install the new, you have to take off the old. And while a 2005 Nissan Altima is being shown here, the same steps will help you with your vehicle. Now it's time to remove the wheels. Safety first. You always want to chalk the wheels that you're not working on. Check the owner's manual for factory approved jack points. Then place the jack under one of the recommended jack points. Raise your vehicle just enough to take some of the weight off the wheel. The tire should remain touching the ground. Then, use a tire iron to loosen the lug nuts. You can use the tire iron that came with your car, or you can grab a Duralast tire iron from AutoZone as shown here. Raise your vehicle to the appropriate height, then place the jack stand under the vehicle, near where the jack is touching it. Once you have the jack stand in the appropriate place, slowly lower the jack until the vehicle is resting securely on the jack stand. Now, completely remove the lug nuts and take off the wheel. Next, the brake caliper is removed. Turning your wheels 45 degrees gives you easier access to your caliper bolts. Before the caliper can be removed, the caliper piston might need to be pushed back to clear the rotor and a flathead screwdriver or an angled pry bar tool is all you need. Next, remove the two caliper bolts from the back of the caliper. Most calipers last over 200,000 miles, but signs of brake fluid leaking, heavy rust, or piston binding could mean it's time to replace them. It's a good idea to inspect for signs of a problem during every brake job. Once the caliper bolts are off, the caliper should slide freely, allowing you to remove it from the bracket. It's a good idea to hang the caliper out of the way with a hanger or bungee cord to keep the brake line safe and free from any stress or tension. Next, remove the caliper bracket from the spindle. Once you have the caliper bracket detached from the spindle, the old brake pads and hardware should be easy to remove. And now is a good time to compress the caliper piston. Some bleeder valves may have a small dust cap to protect the valve. Make sure to remove the valve cap first. Then, use your 10 mm socket wrench to open the bleeder valve. This is what allows the brake fluid to come out. You'll want to use a brake bleeder kit or a drain pan to catch the brake fluid. You want to keep the bleeder valve facing up to prevent air from getting in. And try to make sure no brake fluid gets on any painted surfaces. A caliper compression tool and an old brake pad will make life easier and help protect against damaging the caliper. You can borrow one from AutoZone, saving you from buying one or asking the neighbor for theirs. Use the caliper compression tool to compress the piston until it stops. Hold the caliper as if it were installed with the bleeder valve up to prevent air from getting in and then wait until all of the air bubbles have come out. Now, tighten the bleeder valve. 
Once you're done, take a good look at your rotor. Check for any uneven or irregular wear patterns. A micrometer tool will check your rotor's thickness and can help you determine if it's time to replace your worn rotors. With the old pads removed, the installation can begin. The first thing we need to do is clean the caliper bracket. Use a wire brush to clean away any dirt or debris from the caliper bracket before installing new hardware and brake pads. Now, install the new brake pad hardware. Now you'll want to apply caliper grease directly to the new brake pad hardware you just installed. This will help you avoid getting any grease on the side of the pad that contacts the rotor. Once cleaned and properly lubricated, the caliper bracket is ready to be installed. Be sure to tighten the caliper bracket bolts to the recommended torque specifications. Now you can install the new brake pads. Before installing the caliper, make sure the brake hose didn't get twisted during any of the prior steps. The brake hose should be free of any loops or twists once installed. A twisted brake hose can obstruct the hydraulic fluid from applying pressure to the caliper. Before you reattach the caliper, it's a good idea to apply some brake caliper grease to the places that contact the back of the brake pads. The caliper is reattached by pivoting the caliper into position. Now you can tighten the caliper bolts to the right specifications, which can be found in the repair manual. Once the caliper is reinstalled, it's a good idea to bleed the brake one more time to make sure there isn't any air in the system. Then, tighten the bleeder valve with your 10 millimeter socket wrench. Finally, it's time to throw the wheel back on. When tightening the lug nuts, do so in a star pattern for easier assembly. Now you can jack your vehicle back up enough to remove the jack stand. Once you've lowered your vehicle all the way so the wheels are securely on the ground, you're ready to tighten the lug nuts. If you don't own a torque wrench, you can borrow one for free through the AutoZone Lona Tool program.
With the wheel back on, now you can follow the same steps on the other side of the vehicle. Before the rear brakes can be installed, the old ones need to be removed. And you'll want to refer to the precautions section in the owner's manual before you begin. Next, this is where the wheels come off. But that's a good thing so long as you have the right tools. Safety first. You always want to chalk the wheels that you're not working on. Check the owner's manual for factory approved jack points. Then place the jack under one of the recommended jack points. Raise your vehicle just enough to take some of the weight off the wheel. The tire should remain touching the ground. Then, use a tire iron to loosen the lug nuts. You can use the tire iron that came with your car, or you can grab a Duralast tire iron from AutoZone as shown here. Raise your vehicle to the appropriate height, then place the jack stand under the vehicle, near where the jack is touching it. Once you have the jack stand in the appropriate place, slowly lower the jack until the vehicle is resting securely on the jack stand. Now, completely remove the lug nuts and take off the wheel. Next, the brake caliper is removed. Before the caliper can be removed, the caliper piston might need to be pushed back to clear the rotor, and a flathead screwdriver or an angled pry bar tool is all you need. Next, remove the top caliper bolt. Once the top caliper bolt has been removed, the caliper can swing forward, allowing access to the caliper bracket bolts. Now it's time to remove the caliper bracket. Start by removing the two caliper bracket bolts. Once the bracket bolts are out, you can remove the entire unit by sliding it off the spindle and the rotor. Now you can separate the caliper from the bracket. It's a good idea to hang the caliper out of the way with a hanger or bungee cord to keep the brake line safe and free from any stress or tension. Now the old brake pads and hardware should be easy to remove. Now it's a good time to compress the caliper. Some bleeder valves may have a small dust cap to protect the valve. Make sure to remove the valve cap first. Then, use your 10 millimeter socket wrench to open the bleeder valve. This is what allows the brake fluid to come out. You'll want to use a brake bleeder kit or a drain pan to catch the brake fluid. You want to keep the bleeder valve facing up to prevent air from getting in, and try to make sure no brake fluid gets on any painted surfaces. A caliper compression tool and an old brake pad will make life easier and help protect against damaging the caliper. And with the free AutoZone Loan a Tool program, you can borrow one without purchasing a new one for a single time use. Use the caliper compression tool to compress the piston until it stops. Then wait until all the fluid is done coming out. When you're finished, make sure to tighten the bleeder valve back up. Now's a good time to look over your rotor for signs of uneven wear patterns, and a micrometer tool will check the thickness, helping you determine if it's time for new ones. First things first, let's clean the caliper bracket. Be sure to clean away any dirt or debris from the caliper bracket before installing new hardware and brake pads. Once clean, the caliper bracket is ready for action. Now, install the new brake pad hardware.
it's a good idea to grease the caliper bolts if they need it, making sure not to get any on the threads. Now, slide the caliper bracket back onto the freshly greased caliper bolt. Slide the caliper bracket back onto the spindle. Now, install the caliper bracket bolts. Now, tighten the caliper bracket bolts to the right specifications. Now, you can install the new brake pads. Make sure you apply brake grease to your brake pads where the pads fit into the hardware, but also make sure not to get any grease on the side of the pad that contacts the rotor. Before you reattach the caliper, it's a good idea to apply some brake caliper grease to the places that contact the back of the brake pads. Then, the caliper can be reattached by pivoting the caliper into position. And now you're ready to reattach the caliper bolts. It's also a good idea to grease the caliper bolts if they need it. Now you can tighten the caliper bolts to the right specifications, which can be found in the repair manual. Once the caliper is reinstalled, it's a good idea to bleed the brake one more time to make sure there isn't any air in the system. Then, tighten the bleeder valve with your 10 millimeter socket wrench. Last but not least, it's time to throw the wheel back on. When tightening the lug nuts, do so in a star pattern for easier assembly. Now you can jack your vehicle back up enough to remove the jack stand. Once you've lowered your vehicle all the way so the wheels are securely on the ground, you're ready to tighten the lug nuts. A torque wrench can help and is available with the free AutoZone Lona Tool program. Now that you've finished this side, you can follow the same steps on the other side. Now it's time to prime it, pop it, and pour it in. To prime your brakes, step on the brake pedal several times. This helps extend the pistons closer to the pads, seating the brakes, shims, and rotor. Then pop the hood. You can check the fluid levels and pour in brake fluid if it needs it. Nice job. You just did a complete brake job on your car. And remember, it's a good idea to follow the 30-30-30 rule to break in your new brakes. And be sure to check out our other DIY videos on our official AutoZone channel. Thanks for watching. Get in the zone, AutoZone!